Back here at 819, we have some very special guests with us today. Connor Morenas and his parents, Eric and Tanya. And Connor is just five years old. He's one tough little guy because this next summer, Connor is going to be undergoing a kidney transplant because of a rare kidney disease that I just learned about called nephronopthesis. It's a long word, but he's going to be going to Stanford University in Palo Alto, California to deal with that. And here to talk about it once again, Tanya, Eric, Connor, we're so glad you guys are with us this morning. And I, I want to discuss a little bit more about what Connor is dealing with. He looks like he's feeling okay this morning, but how does he deal with this on a daily basis? What does that do to his health? Um, basically, each day he's got to go through uh, multiple medications taken mm. twice a day. Um, he's got daily injections for growth hormones and his anemia issues. Um, but basically, with his chronic kidney disease, he doesn't grow. Um, it stopped his growth. Mm. And so we work with that each day. Eric, how did you find out that Connor had health issues? Basically, the early appointments, <clears throat> um, you know, the, the doctors noticed he wasn't really on the growth curve and he was just kind of stalling out. So they kind of started testing that way. Yeah. And that was about in s around six months of age is when we started noticing he wasn't feeding anymore. Mm. Um, or as much as a typical child his age would. Um, his physical uh, muscles weren't strong enough to crawl. Um, and so about around his first yearly appointment, his pediatrician had recommended we see an endocrinologist at mm -hmm. that point. And we go see, uh, go to daily feeding labs and that sort of thing to try to work through some of those issues. Um, and then around 2012, which was around his second birthday, was when we got recommended to UNMH um, to the nephrology department there. That has been wonderful. Yeah, I was going to say it must have been quite a quite a change uh, for you all as a family as well when he was first diagnosed. I can imagine. Yes, because we had to put him on um, a strict diet, yeah. uh, low potassium diet, and even just even a glass of milk, um, whole milk. You think how much is that? How much potassium does that include? Mm -hmm. Well, for him, one eight ounce glass blew his whole diet for the day. So we had a work together and figure out uh, new recipes and how to live on a budget as well. What kind of medical procedures does he undergo right now in advance of this big one that's coming up? Um, basically, he's had a feeding tube placed in. Um, he's had a biopsy and after transplant, he'll have to have biopsies about every six months. Um, and he has blood work about every three weeks to monitor his levels and his creatinine levels mm -hmm. to see what his k kidney function is typically at this point. We've also done a uh, tonsillectomy and took his adenoids out and just got back from a heart surgery. Yeah. So and he's then at he, four. He's endured a lot already. Huh? Yes, and on Christmas Day he was admitted to UNMH for the flu. Um, Boy. So he just got out there and uh, Connor, how are you feeling right now? Good. You're feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling better right now. And that's so important as he gets ready for this surgery. That's coming yes. up on, when, in the summer, right? Um, they're predicting um, summer 2015, um, but again, it can go down at any time. Basically, it's based all on kidney function. So with this cold that he, the flu that he caught, um, his creatinine level increased, but with fluids, they were able to bring the kidney function back up for the time being. And now we're just trying to work with doctors to keep the fluids in him to try mm -hmm. to keep enough of that so that way we can put off the transplant as much as we can. And does he have a donor already? Yes, um, I actually was approved by the kidney donor um, board in Palo Alto at Stanford to be his donor. So wow. it's like giving birth a second time. Yeah, I can imagine, I can only imagine. And that's, that you're gonna need help with, I can imagine, only with, just not only just enduring the surgeries, but also financially, correct? Is that gonna be something that is a, is a major factor in all of this coming up in a few months? Yes. So what's on tap? Um, <clears throat> we're kind of doing some fundraising through fundly.com and we're trying to raise $15,000. Um, anything we get over and above that, we're just going to pay it forward and try to help out another family who may be going through the same thing as we are. Yeah, here in New Mexico. So we basically exhausted um, the money that insurance will give us for traveling and that sort of thing. We still have mm -hmm. some of that left, but basically any th we've estimated our travel costs with my husband going back and forth um, because he's has to work as well and um, living expenses out there we're estimating fifteen thousand dollars for that as well as um, we have three different sides of the family that are going to help be helping pay for the expenses as well 
Um, so anything over 15000 that we get, we'd like to donate to another family. I was going to ask what you were going to do with the money if you were able to raise more within that goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right now, um, we've been blessed with the money that we've raised from just our immediate family and friends. Mm -hmm. But we've had a close friend that put together the Fundly website um, because so many people had asked us about it. And so um, we at, weren't very open to it at first. We want to do everything ourselves and because he is our son. Yeah. But we so do important. need help. And what's impo important right now overall is just focusing on him getting better, being able to get this surgery, and then anything above and beyond that. You know, even though we've talked about that, I'm sure is something that can be figured out some other time. But mm -hmm. I know that the, the crowdfunding thing is going to be very important for his recovery. Connor, we're standing behind you. We're cheering you on. And he'll be forward to that. And he'll be hospitalized um, basically two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. And I'll be in the hospital about three to four days. Um, we'll at least have Eric will be with Connor the entire time, um, which will be hard because mm -hmm. the children's hospital and the adult hospital are connected. But they aren't, we won't be in the same wing. Um, so we'll at least have two family members there during recovery at the same time. And we'll be probably in Palo Alto up to 12 weeks. Um, and he'll require clinic visits mm -hmm. and um, several times a week and that sort of thing. But it'll be a long recovery for myself in terms of yeah. going from two kidneys to one and having my body um, bounce back to that. And uh, energy will probably be low, but um, we have a supportive family, and mm -hmm. we're staying strong. Well, we, we wish you the best. We appreciate it. Thank Thanks you. very much, both of you, Eric and Tanya Morenas. Connor, looking really healthy this morning. We hope that that continues for you, and good luck with that, uh, that transplant coming up in this next year. Fundly is the website, right? Yes. Correct. Okay, and we've got a link to that on krqe.com under the KRQE link, so look for that there.